Hello, I'm delighted to read again to the Thousand Monkeys on Zoom. I'm a rhyming translator poet, and uh, this year, 2021, is the bicentenary of the death of John Keats. So I've translated a poem from the Greek of Angelos Sikelianos, the last great traditional poet of Greece, which is called John Keats, and he is uh, basing it on the incident in the Iliad where Telemachus, accompanied by Mentor, the older man who looks after him in his father's absence because he's the son of Odysseus, who's been away for 20 years at the war, hasn't turned up. So the two of them fly off together, first to Pylos, where they see King Nestor. They want to get news of his father. Then they go on to Sparta, where Menelaus and Helen are. And then as he's Keats, they go on to Rome. And it's not in fact Mentor, it's Athena who's transformed herself. So here's the poem, John Keats. On Pylos broad and shining shore, I pondered that you would be my friend. With Mentor's lofty ship, moored as day ended on the embracing strand. Linked in the light-winged comradeship of youth, they soar amidst the gods. We'd fly away to rocky thrones made smooth by time and multitudes. We'd stand before the man who, calm and wise, three generations ruled. His speech with voyages and homilies was ripe as he was old. A heifer for the gods, three seasons grown, dawn, the blood rite to come. Hark, his three daughters yield a single groan against the axe's hum. The eye, black fringed, slow rolling, in a moment by darkness smothered, the horns that serve no purpose, pallid crescent in gold foil covered. I thought with love of your ablutions chaste as of brother and sister, your naked form, washed and in tunic dressed, so fine by Polycasti. I thought to urge you with my foot and wake you as of at the night's abating, lest we lose the very hour when the shining vehicle was yoked and waiting. All day, unspeaking or in plain discourses, now hither, now thither, we'd range and steer the swaying yoke of horses to one side or other. But more than this, I thought your gaze would fall, your eyes being like a fawn's, oblivious on Menelaus' hall, sinking bright gold and bronze to depths of no return, unmoved observer in memory's sea chamber with glaucous ivory and fabled silver and ponderous amber. I thought I spoke with soft unhurried voice, bending low to your ear. Steady your gaze, my friend, before our face Helen shall soon appear. Soon here before us, we shall recognize the swan's peerless daughter. And from that time, we must immerse our eyes in Lethean water. The vision gleamed, yet weeds obscured the ways by which to you I came. I strewed your grave with roses all ablaze. Rome blossomed in your name. So blazed your songs of gold, like long dead men, strong and in full harness, seen whole in graves exposed, who being seen, founder, dissolve, vanish. I thought to lay before you fitting treasures. What but Mycenae's booty, goblets and battle swords and broad tiaras, and on your lifeless beauty, a mask. Such as the Achaean king of old war, who was laid beneath, all carved by skillful blade in beaten gold on the faint trace of death.